So every point will take the intersection of the triangles of the perpendicular bisectors according to the Tyson polygon method. And then it is totally geometric. And then it would usually we are using for estimating the aerial distribution, the aerial representation of those points. And then in arc map, you can see here, and you can find in a analysis tools in the proximity, and then you can find create Tyson polygon. So as a, pra as a practice, we can try one and then uh, you can use it. So here it is. I can import the points and title two. I will open arc map and then import the points, the points that I'm going to interpolate. And then where are those points? I'm not here, you, you, this is your fault writing. Interpolation, Tyson polygon meter, and let's see stations. These are the stations, for instance. These are the points. And then the points, let's open and see the attribute tables. So it have what? I mean, the stations for uh, a certain meteorological station, they have a table of order, and then they have X and Y stations. I mean, uh, locations, and then they have annual rainfall, and then maximum temperature, annual maximum temperature. So what I'm looking for is, I mean, I, I can prepare a certain boundary where these stations are there. For instance, I can bring one of the watersheds that we have seen for delineation. We can delineate and look at the, that watershed, actually. So let me bring one area or boundary. I think... Uh, <coughs> I can bring Gumara here. So this station is probably I can use as a representative rainfall stations for this watershed. So if I'm going to use this one, I mean, this is representative, but I can use that. I mean, where is the value of this is the rainfall? Where is the value of this? I mean, a point here. What values or what magnitudes of rainfall does this area would take? I mean, this is a point estimation, and then I'm looking for any arbitrary position. So if I don't have any value for any, un I mean, unknown places here, especially, so what I'm going to do is use interpolation and try to know those point areas or those areas for rainfall. So here is, um, I'm going to execute it. Arbitral box. And then here is the analysis tool, proximity, create Tyson polygon. So stations are my points. And these stations have a certain magnitude, based on which magnitude I'm interpolating. So here it is, and then it will ask me output fields, I'm going to use all. And then now what it does is, it does what? The, the geometry. The geometry for each or contribution of areas for each station. That means if that area have rainfall, I mean if that station has a rainfall magnitude, so the area of the contribution of that area in this and polygon would take that value of that station. So let's see. Hmm. You don't know the exact reason. So it is, this is not your thing, I think exercises, interpolation, I can say th pole. Let's see what will happen. So here is, so let me label the stations, let me label the stations and then we'll tell you what it does mean exactly. 
level and then station yes it's station and then let me say level features so you can see that so any parameter for this and according to Tyson polygon any parameter if there is rainfall parameter or any what I mean take if this have a water quality representing this area or rainfall so we'll take the whole magnitude every magnitude will take this one so it says if I have I'm ever rainfall of 1652 millimeter per year so it does mean that this rainfall is influencing the whole area of this one so it indicates that this area will take I mean any place any position in this area will take the annual rainfall of Amadwar. That means the contribution of this point is influencing the whole area of this point so that we can take it. Now the thing is I mean we can just use the representation is and then indicate and it is no graduated is not some input field okay id not color map unique uh, root values this one is id and then this id no 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 symbols also So now, I mean, I'm, this is not my boundary, so I'm looking for the stations, influence of each station using, I mean, a watershed that I'm looking for. So I want to know the contribution of each rainfall station for a certain watershed. No, this is not my boundary, actually. This is the extent of the Tyson polygon. This is the extent of the Tyson polygon made by I drawing that geometry in which we have seen that the first is connecting the points and the second is drawing perpendicular bisectors. So they have... Uh, that one. So now I can clip this one and then can say or contribute, look for the contributions of each station for the watershed. So I can clip this one. So it's a problem saving sometimes. <laughs> I can just remove this one and then remove. So what's this? Mean? So I mean, this is in that watershed. If I want to know, I mean, the contribution of each station in terms of rainfall. So this area is contributed. This part of or this portion of the area, this one is contributed by a station called Amadwar, and then it can take the rainfall of that station. And then this double tower will take the this portion of in the influence from the watershed. And then this watershed, Lowway station. So it can, I mean, influence this much of the area, this portion or much of the area. So we can calculate the area too. And then you can say, mechanical issues which takes the larger in the watershed. So this will help us to know at least, I mean, the contribution of each station in the watershed. Plus, we can know, or we can clearly identify the area rainfall from different stations rather than using a single station. And then this is how we can use uh, this M polygon and then there is the area that we can estimate and then see the proportion of this uh, the proportion of these areas I think I can export this one so how can I know that the proportion of each station so I mean this is area only that 
So which one is the proportion? I mean, how much part of the watershed this station is influencing? And then about this station. So I can export this one. Export data. I think I can open this one. I am looking for the X here. So export data. Not this one. Exercises in their position. So this is stations contribution. Contribution. I have to say DBF. So now I can open using Excel and then look at the contribution of each station for that watershed. So I can open so here is your folder exercises in their position stations contribution so all not all files i'm looking for dbf so here it is so these are the areas of the contribution so you have each station 1 to 16 these are the stations these are the stations that we are looking for i think uh, Every station has to come. Export scenario and level. So I can take a copy and then I can take here so that I can know the contribution of each station in proportion or in person. Copy. For one ZIE station. And then copy for this station. Copy this station. And then copy. The other one might have different. There is no any station. So here it is. This is the sum of the areas. So the contribution in percent. For each areas, so that you can use for area can be calculated using this one divided by this times hundred. I have to just tie this one. So it will help us to know which area or which portion or point of um, geographical location having rainfall magnitude has high contribution on the watershed. So you can see that these three stations has higher rainfall contributions than the remaining two. And as you can see that their contribution is higher. So the bottom line or the conclusion here is, I mean, to know the unknown the, as part of interpolation technical, as a method of interpolation technical to know the magnitude of uh, the unknown plus places based on the known places in Tyson polygon the geometries are just drawn and then based on that geometry each geometry area tells us the contribution or the influence of a single point the influence of a single point like this one like what you have seen here like what you mean so this is the points so this area means the whole area or the whole section of this area will take the value of this one. This is according to the Tyson polygon. So it's not usually recommended because it is geometrical and then it doesn't incorporate uh, topographic, topographic relationships. I can say this is your interpolation Tyson.
So the second method for our practical session that I'm going to show you inverse distance weight. So the assumption is it says that one size fits all and works best for dense evenly spaced sample points. When you have evenly spaced and dense sample points, you can use inverse distance weight. And does not consider any trends in the data. That means it will take the minimum and the maximum of those values as a, a boundary. And then uh, have sample points closer to the cell have greater influence on the cell systematic values than sample points that are further. So a single cell might have its, ex, it, it, it's, um, its extension is based on the distance. or uh, features so here it is you can see that the representations and then the maximum and the minimum are these ones observed and then everything lies here and then this is point one and then this is point two so it assumes that this is a maximum the minimum limits of uh, the points that you can see so and the principle is the same and then the principle is the same in uh, original definitions that they are trying to uh, provide a value for a known place based on the known places and then again you can find the idw that in spatial analysis in arcjs idw and then you can uh, put different parameters so you can use uh, the output for your analysis or the purpose unit so again this is i can bring again these stations Again, these are the stations. These are the stations. And then here, when I interpolate, it asks me the field in which I'm going to interpolate. Which value of the field are you looking for to distribute it for uh, to distribute for unknown places? Am I using the elevation, the weather quality, or the rainfall? So let, let's see together. This is partial analysis tools, interpolation, and then this idea of inverse distance weight. So it will ask me the feature points I have to pick, and the Z field. Z field means the one which we are interpolating, the magnitude. The magnitude in this case, I don't have Z value or X value. I'm interpolating the annual rainfall for those stations. So this is the annual rainfall. And then the output raster, my, my JS is working with the default. When I just change it, it becomes uh, an error because there is an error in my installation after. So, and then it asks me the output because it's giving or providing me in terms of raster here in interpolation in uh, TSM polygon, the difference is the representation of the areas are in uh, feature or di discrete form, that's in vector. Here it's in raster form. And it asks me to give him or to provide the JS for uh, analysis, the cell size. So here there is no any problem, you can use this one. But in cases where we can analyze with other factors, with other raster maps for analysis, we need to do based on the digital elevation model. So I, I can use 100 if I'm looking for. So the cell size, because it gives me. So this is power is optional, we are using linear, so I can just remove. 
So the other point is it provides searching radius. So there is a single point. I mean, you have to provide the maximum number of points for searching around the, the point. So it might have like this one. So we can use the default one. And then if you have input barrier polyline features, that means if you have a boundary, so if you want the interpolation to be in that boundary limit, you can put it because I don't have, I can just say okay. So you can leave the option as actually. So this is the inverse distance width. And then you can open it and look at it and then So it gives you raster information, it's a raster data set, and then everything is here, and special inference is here, and then I think there is a format. The format is FGDBR, you can change it into grid, and this is one of the raster format, and then you can change into grid, and then we can just look at this into different representations, I think for visual purpose. So now there is no area contribution for each of the cells, like the Tyson polygon. So you can, if I just extend the symbology like into 15 or 14, you can see different values. You can see different values. So this point is representing only this point during this time, and it varies here. It varies here. And though it's a color, it varies within a certain extent. And now we can uh, use this one for our purpose we need, for instance. So it does mean that the higher values, when we are closer to the cell, so look at this cell and this cell. So when we are closer to this one, the magnitude around here will be closer to this one. And then when we are closer to this one, you can see from the colors that these values be taken accordingly. And then if I need to clip using uh, the point that I was using, I can clip and use for my purpose like the previous one so i can cut and then take this one for my raster analysis or for my purposes usually when we use uh, in a reservoir analysis the first thing is to interpolate these points or the basimetry points into raster format and then from raster format to thin development so during that time We'll see the is this interpolation technique uh, in uh, raster form. Now, I mean, I, the purpose is to to determine for the unknown places. If you are interested to know the point, if you have a point here, and if you have a point here, so you can extract from this one. This is a raster. So the magnitude is this one is what the annual rainfall of each station, and then. If you are interested to know this area, the, the rainfall for this area, you can put the point here and then extract any of the values, any of the values here. How much would be the rainfall here? So you can bring the point and then know your stations. So if I can create one point and then let me show you. I mean, this is a known place and then you might say that how you can know that one. But in principle, if the first thing is, for instance, for this case, you can see that it's, it ranges from 1380.7 to 1407, this area. This is a range that you can know. But if I have one point, and if I am interested to extract the amount of rainfall that, from that point, I can use uh, the first thing that I have to have a point, 
I have to have a point, and then let me create that point. Interpolation. Point extract or ano, let me say ano. I can say WGS. This is the point. Let me create this point. Start editing unknown. Okay. And then I'm going to bring this one. Here's the unknown. The point. So let me put here one, two, any. I suppose these are your interest places. So I'll stop editing. Yes. These are my points. And then let me open attribute. Let me provide them a field. Add field. Unknown. Name. So let me rename them. I need to edit unknown. Yes. So let me say this is U1. So let me stop it. And save it, yes. So these are the labels, and the label features need to be like uh, an ID, you name, apply. Okay, so here are the points that were. I mean, these are your unknown points or your interest points where you want to know a magnitude the magnitude in which you have already created from the known mass. So I think we can know that from spatial analysis, I mean, if you are working with any raster data, please use our spatial analysis tools. A raster with feature, raster with point, with line, any process. So extraction, and then I can extract by sample. So the input raster is IDW, and then uh, the input locations or the rasters that I'm going to extract from the raster data is unknown. And then let me say, well, okay. So these are the samples. And then where are they? These are the IDW. These are the samples that I have to extract. And then I'm expecting the amount of rainfall attached with this one for unknown place. So here it is. The IDW shape one, this is the points. So these are the points. And then this is the amount. Of, so it tells you IDW shape one. That means it extracts from this one. And then it is for this magnitude. For instance, two, unknown two. Has this value unknown has this value and unknown three u3 has this value and u4 has this value and then u5 have this value and then this by doing this one you are extracting the magnitudes for your unknown places your unknown places so you can look at this one so these ones are open attribute for these values for the five is zero so we are not worrying for this one we have U2, U3, U4, and 5 so U1 represents for 0 there, U2 for 1, U3 for 3, U4 for 3, and U5 for 5. So these values now are embedded with uh, the values there in that. So I can uh, just uh, add field AR for unknown. So these are like uh, double. 14 because the numbers are having highest k yes and then i can now zero u1 that is open attributes so here is i think unknown two i can just take that one unknown two where is unknown two this is unknown two 
we'll take this value start editing and no no paste okay unknown to this one is unknown to two so i just paste it <clears throat> and it's telling me that the scale or decimal press after the point can exit four digits i have given that the scale or the number of digits after uh, decimal has to be four and now it it is like one two three four five six so i'm just out of the row so i have to improve it i have to create add the field and improve it that's it no add the field is out of i have to stop editing because it do not work i have to do this one add field and that's uh u aerial frame four and then i am using double let me do this one theony and then the decimal place like eight okay yes do this one and then i have to start editing some point unknown points okay continue so let me see this one open object id open shape id so i can copy or i can join i can join now join shape id yes choose the field chain was done okay let me just id and then okay hmm joins remove joins so I can just copy and click it. So this is for unknown, for unknown one, I have this one. Copy, unknown one. Open attribute table. Yes, we are in edit mode. This is unknown one, for you one, I have to paste it. And then for two, or two this is and then I have this one so you can do similar fashion and fill the others so the thing here now is these are our unknown places that we have created and then or in cases in which you are interested and then we are looking for we we found that the magnitude of these points from uh, the interpolated one for unknown ones this is the advantage of uh, interpolation IDW, IDW, two other software. So the next, I would, I mean, tell with the principles and then you can uh, try in your own. And then the Kriging. Kriging is one technical for interpolation. We mostly are using this one and then have different parameters. And then in Kriging, the distance and the direction of every point pair is quantified to provide information on spatial autocorrelation of sample points. So it doesn't take the distance between them, but it uses a spatial autocorrelation, correlation between the points. Those points having strong correlation will take uh, higher magnitude. 